We proclaimed into law the Preserving Canada's Economic Prosperity Act, also known as Bill 12, which gives our government the ability to curtail oil shipments uh, from Alberta. We did this to have the power to protect Alberta. It's, it's undeniable that there's more bitumen coming in and less refined product uh, coming in, and the consequence of that is prices are going up. I came out to do as I've been doing since I was sworn in, uh, to say to those who want to uh, turn uh, Burrard Inlet into an export terminus exclusively, uh, that that's not something that's in the interest of British Columbia. Premier Kenny uh, did not uh, make any threats of any kind. We had a diplomatic and courteous conversation last night and I, I'm confident that uh, that we can get these prices down but we need cooperation from Ottawa and we do not need provocative action from our neighbours. The long simmering dispute between BC and Alberta over the Trans Mountain Pipeline expansion continues despite much campaign rhetoric and the proclamation of Alberta's Bill 12 yesterday which kind of turns off the taps to BC it's so it's called. It hasn't yet hit a boiling point. BC Premier John Horgan says his discussion with Jason Kenney as you heard there went well but his comments today about wanting more refined product to come into his province and less bitumen may crank up the heat on the issue. So where is this dispute headed? It's time for the power panel. In Montreal, former Quebec Liberal Cabinet Minister David Ertel. And here in studio with me, Summa Strategies' Tim Powers, Kathleen Monk of Earnscliff Strategy Group, and host of CBC Radio's The House, Chris Hall. Hello, everyone. Hello. Nice Hi. to see you. So I just wanna, this is the first time we're talking about the subject on the show, so I just want to make sure our viewers understand. So first, we've got the proclamation of Bill 12, which is something the NDP passed, the former NDP government in Alberta, which essentially, essentially says we can control where our bitumen goes, where our oil goes, where our nat natural resources go outside of our our borders, meaning we can turn it off and not send it to BC. BC immediately today filed a, a court injunction basically to fight that. Um, and then we heard Premier Horgan there, that clip that we, we had off the top of this block, Chris, where he is saying now that if the TMX were to bring in refined product that could help alleviate what we know are extremely high gas Gasoline prices price. in yeah. BC, that hey, that might be something to talk about. He wouldn't go so far as to say that means then I would support mm -hmm. TMX, and it's also a little bit confusing because uh, though the government owns it, there are contracts that exist. Right, for how much producers. flows through, the tolls yeah. that are applied, and these sorts of things. Look, um, Bill 12 was around, as you said, uh, brought in by Rachel Notley, an NDP government, uh, to, as a threat, you know, in the, in the background, uh, because of John Horgan's government's opposition to TMX expansion. Uh, Jason Kenney's taken it one step further. He's now proclaimed it into law, meaning mm -hmm. it can be used yeah. very quickly. Uh, and I think John Horgan was, um, was replying in a way you would expect, okay. which is to say, we understand you have this power, we think, and we're going to court to argue that that's a trade issue. You're trying to deny trade, interprovincial trade. You can't do that. Um, but if anyone had thought that the relationship between Alberta and B.C. was going to get any better, it clearly is not, because the two will be at loggerheads, not only over whether or not TMX goes ahead, but what TMX should contain. Uh, you said the contracts, but the message clearly from John Horgan today was, we're happy to take more light crude that we can mm -hmm. refine. Uh, is it Park Hills, I think it's called, in B.C.? Parkland. Parkland. Park and, and, and not bitumen. And uh, obviously that's what, uh, that's what the contract calls for and certainly what Alberta wants to export. Kathleen, what do you think it means for, uh, I guess, the relationship between the two provinces and the relationship with the federal government? Yeah, I don't think the relationship is getting that much better, but what did you expect with uh, Jason Kenney as premier? I mean, he chose today, um, or actually, sorry, yesterday, um, in terms of proclaiming it. He chose posturing. He chose photo ops over actually kind of... Uh, fostering a better relationship and looking at general Canadian prosperity. That's what he chose. I think that actually uh, targeting BC in the way that Kenny is choosing to do is not going to help. Uh, it's going to put a lot of lawyers to work, as I've said before. It's not actually going to help either people in BC or people in Alberta. I think actually Horgan today made a really interesting point. He actually said in the call that he had with Kenny that, in fact, Kenny himself said he's not going to turn off the tap. So mm -hmm. why why do this? So why, what's, what's the difference between threaten? Kenny doing that and Notley doing it? The, Notley actually she also had a press conference today and she actually claimed she said the point is to have the legislation but to ring fence it to have it there's the threat but what actually Kenny has done by proclaiming it is that now he has triggered this legal lawsuit process EB the, the Attorney General for BC has already come out he's already filed in the Queen's uh, bench court in Calgary a challenge to this law um, so he's just triggered a bunch of lawyers making a lot of money um, and as opposed to actually trying to 
not further damage the relationship between BC and Alberta, but actually look at how we can get Canadians back to work, how we can get the flow, oil flowing. And one thing that Horgan said today, which I really did tweak me, was the idea going back to the idea that Canadians need more value added jobs, right? We need to be processing, refining more of that product in, in country. We know for a fact there's many members on the West Coast that are in those refineries working, both building trades folks, both Unifor folks that are, these are jobs well paid family supporting jobs um, that we could actually bring some of the bitumen there some of the refined yeah. lighter product to be refined in the province I take your point about the proclamation but I I mean yeah. the rhetoric is exactly the same as Notley when she was premier right we were we're, we're using this but only as a threat mm -hmm. and he's saying the same thing he but you heard that great it. you heard that great clip from Notley today where she's like Jason Kenney is essentially a guy who's swinging a gun around the downtown core but it, he's taken the bullets out of it today he he this is her clip from her press conference today and I thought it was it was bang on. He, he's great at posturing and waving threats, but really he's got no ammo. Well, I disagree with that on, on a few points. I, I mean, he was elected by 55% of Albertans to come forward and take more forceful postures uh, on the development of oil and the extraction and shipping of oil in Alberta. If he's done anything today, he's been predictable, which is important in all of this, because he did say he was going to uh, get this bill, give the bill assent, action the bill, make it law, make a proclamation about it. So he's done that. Um, but he's also setting out the, the, the terms for the public discourse that investors will look at that, you know, when it comes to oil and oil development in, in Alberta, I'm going to try and create a climate of certainty where I can, and that is with me. And that is one of the biggest challenges Alberta faces. Never mind whether that, oil moves. Do that? How, yeah. It does certainty by saying that I am going to stick and fight hard and be consistent on that. On a number of fronts, since he's become premier just two days in, he has done that. His appearance at the Senate Committee on C-49, coming forward with this proclamation, um, the positioning on, on C-69 and the like. He has to live his words. Had he gone as far to shut the taps off, that would have been a stupid thing to do with this juncture in time. So I think what you actually saw from Kenny and the way Kenny operates is a, a predictable and pragmatic approach from his perspective given the mandate that he has. Do you agree or disagree, David? I actually agree. I, I also had the gun metaphor in mind, but the reverse. I, I thought the previous legislature adopted this bill, Bill 12, unanimously, but it was like a gun without any bullets. Now, what Jason Kenney has done is actually put a bullet in the gun. And in, the, in this, this is a, a political brinksmanship game here. Yeah. And this is really about Jason Kenney sending a very strong message right off the bat, a few days after, after he's been sworn in as Premier of Alberta. And look at the effect. He's forced a reaction from Premier Horgan about how high gas prices are in the lower mainland in BC. And you know, in Vancouver, it's like a buck seventy, a buck seventy-one now. And that's exactly the same type of message that the BC liberals are talking about in the opposition. So this is putting added pressure on, on Premier Oregon Morgan. Remember, he's a minority government. And he he has to talk about high gas prices right now instead of really talking about the specific issue. So sort of forcing Premier Horgan into a defensive position, and, and then Premier Horgan, what does he do? What a lot of premiers do when they're in a tough spot, they call in the, the feds and say, well, we need the feds to come in and take care of this issue. So actually, I thought in, well, in this game <laughs> of rationalizing, rationalizing this debate and trying to start his own discussion about how can Alberta get its resources out, I think he, he scored a lot of good points today. The only thing I would highlight, Chris, is that he also has some luck in that gas prices are so high right yeah. now, right? Like the, the yeah. timing couldn't be better. Yeah. For I, I'm not sure the cause effect is there. And to continue yeah. with the analogy, there's only one bullet. So, <laughs> I mean, I don't know how that helps necessarily. What I'm concerned about is, that, as I watch all of this unfold, is that we're increasingly seeing politicians relying on the courts, right? We're going mm -hmm. to have a court case mm -hmm. against the carbon tax, so the backstop being brought in in, in Edmonton, or, sorry, in Alberta and in Saskatchewan and B.C. and New Brunswick. Now we have 
have Horgan going to court, already gone to court with the, the feds over, yeah. over TMX. TMX, and now he's going to go to court with uh, Alberta. Um, I don't think people elect politicians to go to court. I think they elect them to, to work together to try to resolve some of these issues. I understand who Jason Kenney's playing to. He's playing to his audience in Alberta. Uh, I'm just not sure what he ultimately accomplishes down the road in promoting the idea that, uh, that Alberta is a better place to invest today. Except when it comes to the politics of resource in Canada, the use of the court is not, not a, uh, a new thing at all. Quebec and Newfoundland, as David and I yep. know, yep. have used yep. it extensively. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been used yep. for offshore oil and the like. It's a pretty common tool, and often it can be an effective tool for a province. In this case, though, you have two provinces mm -hmm. going the, at the each other. Yeah, so the ironic going... part is Alberta's legislation is, they're, they're taking Alberta's legislation to court because it's, they, Alberta is trying to restrict what goes in and out of its and borders. Then taking BC out. is taking the feds to court because it wants to restrict what goes in yeah. and out yeah. of its borders. And BC has, to, on, on Bill 12 specifically, BC has asked to take that legislation right to the Supreme Court to deal with it there, and Alberta stopped that because they were just basically ragging the puck. Well, we shall see how it plays out. Uh, me thinks it will be continuing, and Jason Kenney is here in Ottawa tomorrow, actually. So. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video. Thanks for watching.